afternoon. This is Kathy Maffrey, the Director of the Improving Individual Patient Care National Coordinating Center, or IIPC-NCC. We are glad you could join us today for the IIPC Rockstar Final Tour. For those of you who have not been on the IIPC bandwagon as ADE, HAI, or nursing home fans in the tent scope of work, let me take just a moment to introduce you to our music, our band, our rock stars, and our tour. As the 10th scope of work started, we were all focused on three aims listed in the National Quality Strategy. In a nutshell, it is make care safer, make people and communities healthier, and make care more affordable by reducing costs of care through continual improvement. The IIPC aim really reached across all three aims, working with hospitals, nursing home, pharmacists, clinics, and numerous other healthcare providers and stakeholders. Despite a few bumps and sharp turns in the road, there were 53 QIOs ready to embrace this work and provide support to their communities across the three aims and most of the six priorities of the National Quality Strategy. As QIOs developed their local learning and action networks, there were immediate successes to share. Success in making care safer, engaging patients and family in care, promoting the spread of best practices, sharing communication strategies to coordinate care across settings, and much, much more. QIOs helped write some, if not all of the music, by contributing to QIO change packages. Unlike specific clinical change packages that we often see, these change packages are roadmaps for QIOs to learn from one another. Then they were compiled into one living document, making robust resources. QIOs were invited to participate in jam sessions, which you might also know as office hour calls, to brainstorm when we needed new melodies or lyrics. Often they were invited to the stage to become a rock star and share with a national audience. Sometimes the NCC found several QIOs topping the charts with their own local land top hits. So we hosted concerts so that all the rock stars could get a chance to perform live on stage. This scope of work has produced an abundance of rock stars with great work by QIOs that you'll be hearing more about. The IIPC NCC has taken a look through our jam sessions, stage performances, concerts, and identified some valuable souvenirs to keep. We also compiled a playlist from the favorite hits to share with you today. As we make stops on the tour, you will hear some of the popular hits. So, to get us started, Julie Myers, the IIPC NCC manager, will join me to get this old tour bus on the road. Julie? Thanks, Kathy. It looks like our exit is coming right up for the first concert on the tour. Michelle Lauder, the ADE lead, is getting the rock stars on stage, so let's check in with her. Michelle? To the ADE stage of the IIPC Rockstar Tour. We have had so much success in the ADE sub-aim that I'm glad we finally have time to celebrate. Most of this success is due to the innovative, shameless approach that QIOs took to build community teams. Let's take a moment to celebrate three key themes in the ADE work, collaboration, patient-centered care, and boundarylessness. PSPC, the ADE's land collaborative, grew from 68 community teams to nearly 400 teams because of QIO recruitment efforts. To date, there are almost 1,000 partnering organizations supporting team efforts. We have seen a 50% relative improvement in the rate of adverse drug events. Thanks to the signature style and structure of the PSPC, QIOs were able to develop relationships with QIO colleagues, new and advanced PSPC teams, and partners around the nation to truly collaborate to improve individual patient care. ADE style of collaboration made it quite natural to collaborate across sub-aims and aims, especially when it came to reducing antipsychotic use. Take for instance the story of Bill Turley. If you have not heard about Bill or seen his story, then let me tell you about him. Bill is a resident at a nursing home and had been on a combination of medications, including antipsychotics and antidepressants, for about 10 years. He struggled with depression and had trouble sleeping. 
After completing medication reconciliation and chart review, the care team engaged Bill by educating him on the risk of long-term use of antipsychotics. He was apprehensive and concerned about medication changes, but the team reassured him that there were other options to address his sleeping problems. They worked together on a reduction plan, and today, Bill is more active, alert, and happy. Leaders at the nursing home believe that including patients and families in the decision-making process is critical to its success in reducing antipsychotic use. In the ADE work, QIOs took boundarylessness to heart, believing that sharing success would only create more success for more beneficiaries. ADE leads and their teams have shared successful tools, like Stephen Chin's tool, to better record and categorize adverse drug events while also distinguishing preventable and potential adverse drug events. This tool has been adopted and adapted countless times. Teams have shared their lessons learned in an open manner, which invited others to share their successes and insights so that the team facing a barrier could find ways to succeed. In my opinion, the ADE leads took this concept of sharing transparently a little bit further than expected. They would share and adapt tools from each other, but they also share their unique approaches to using research-based tools like Interact and Match. Then of all the things to do, these rock stars actually share their data and results. They invited other teams to join brainstorming jam sessions and even created statewide networks to help spread best practices and innovations. Creative approaches to the more mundane of tasks were captured, and we invite you to download the lyrics of the ADE work by finding the ADE Change Package online, which reflects successful QIO interventions and strategies for recruitment, collaboration, integrated care delivery, measurable improvement, sustainability, and evaluation. Once you take a look at the detailed tools and approaches, you will have no doubt that the ADE work was filled with rock stars. From using appropriate portion placemats, the five core elements of the medical medication therapy management model to incorporating pharmacy students in on-site medication reconciliation and chart reviews, these ADE leads know how to rock. How else would you explain that 4,411 beneficiaries are now in control of their A1C levels, 5,062 beneficiaries have INRs within therapeutic range, and that over 5,000 ADEs were prevented since the statement of work began? Rock on, my friends. Rock on. Thanks, Michelle. That was a great concert. As we head to the next exit, Jennifer O'Hagan, the HAI lead, is working on the sound checks with QIO Rockstars. Let's join her for a rockumentary on tour. Jennifer? Thanks for joining us for the HAI rockumentary. We know there were many successful tools, resources, and actions implemented during the scope of work. Some that contributed significantly are the National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN. Through NHSN, the CDC has seen increased reporting and tracking and has identified areas for improvement in HAIs. NHSN trainings also lent an opportunity for networking among QIO, HAI leads, and analysts during their relentless job of training hospital personnel and keeping rights conferred so that data could be tracked and monitored regularly. Another notable contribution to the work was the IIPC NCC Learning in Action Network. These LAN sessions were made available to providers with CE credits offered and helped to advance the progress in HAI reduction through sharing and collaboration. To date, we have recorded over 4,100 participants for the six HAI LAN sessions as a result of QIO spreading and sharing session invitations with providers. Of particular note from these LAN sessions is the facing case for HAI reduction programs. This session highlighted the HAI change package, some C-suite and budgeting cases, and also gave those of us working to reduce HAIs more patient stories to show why it's so important, giving us additional perspective, motivation, and leverage to continue this work. The most influential factor in all of this work is the combined effort of QIOs and the 837 unique recruited hospitals, along with the fantastic partnerships QIOs have with providers, mentor hospitals, departments of public health, APIC chapters, and even some local governments, all working day in and day out to reduce HAIs. Additional highlights worth mentioning. QIOs were able to get more than 70% of recruited hospitals to participate in SSI reduction projects. QIOs realized success by reducing device days, resulting in a relative improvement rate of 8.5% for county. Although the standardized infection ratio remained relatively unchanged, the RIR translates to more than 80,000 fewer days with urinary catheters for beneficiaries. 
For CLABSI, among reporting hospital units, the national rate has resulted in an RIR of 60%, which means there were approximately 220 fewer central line bloodstream infections for recruited facilities. Across the QIOs working to reduce CDI, there was a 5.4% RIR resulting in 373 fewer CDI infections. And finally, QIOs were also able to work with more than 97% of recruited facilities to implement an antimicrobial stewardship program. So as the HAI reduction work continues, we want to acknowledge all that's been accomplished and encourage you in your efforts. Rock on, QIOs. Thanks, Jennifer. Another great session. That's right, Kathy. Those hits just keep on rolling. We have one concert left and the exit is just ahead. We have co-leads Marilyn Ryerson and Kelly O'Neill for the HAC Nursing Home Concert Recap. Let's exit here to see what all the noise is about. Marilyn and Kelly? Thanks. Hi. Highlights from our tour are the great successes achieved by QIO staff. As a result of the work done in Phase 1 of the contract, there is continued improvement on both the high-risk pressure ulcer measure and the physical restraints measure. For high-risk pressure ulcer measure, we have a national relative improvement rate of more than 38%. And for physical restraints, it's currently down to 234 nationally, which is a relative improvement rate of over 75%. We are so proud that together QIOs and nursing homes improved and now are sustaining those gains. In Phase 2, QIOs have successfully recruited more than 5,000 nursing homes to participate in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative, where we're using the change package to promote strategies, change concepts, and action items to focus on person-centered care and systems improvement. Our next tour will build on the successes of the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative as we remain committed to instill quality and performance improvement practices, eliminate health care acquired conditions, and dramatically improve resident satisfaction. Kelly, would you please share a little more? Sure. Thanks, Marilyn, and hi, everyone. It has been a pleasure for me to be part of this production, which reflects the hard work and commitment of QIOs, nursing homes, and long-term care stakeholders and partners across the country, collaborating to improve the lives of those living and working in nursing homes. For me, some of the highlights have been noting that in Phase 2, more than 72% of participating homes have completed the QAPI self-assessment tool, more than 80% have set goals, and implemented systems to monitor progress in their quality improvement activities. QIOs led learning and action networks across the country that focused on using QAPI as a framework for change. You facilitated state-level participation in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative, used data to drive improvement, and promoted peer-to-peer -peer sharing of best practices and lessons learned. And this has resulted in better care, health, and outcomes for a lot of nursing home residents. For example, in Phase 2, just looking at three of the long-term quality measures that make up the composite score, from early 2013 to early 2014, and this is across the Phase 2 participants, over 9,500 fewer antipsychotic medications were used, there were 3,300 fewer urinary tract infections, and 1,700 fewer physical restraints used. Wow. Yeah, those results rock. Thanks, Marilyn and Kelly. Kathy, let's get back on the road. What great concerts. I remember my favorites. Will you? Well, just in case you don't, the souvenirs and playlists are available free of charge after the Rockstar Tour on healthcare communities. These and many other toolkits, change packages, resources, Rockstar videos, are all available for QIOs on healthcare communities. Thank you.